I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus, when I made you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your Church. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open It's when you call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name Okay, church. <laughs> Y'all came ready, didn't you? I love it. I love it. We come in here, we're just singing about coming to life. You know, Jesus bringing us to life, calling us out of that grave. And man, that's just amazing, right? That we get to come in here. We don't have to get warmed up. We just know it's the truth. We know it's what scripture says. We've experienced his love and his grace in our lives. And so despite what our lives look like and despite how messed up this world is, we can come here and shout and, and sing with joy and a smile on our face because Jesus is alive he is on the throne. He is good. He knows us. He saved us. He loves us. And he's here right now, and he wants to move, and he wants to work, and we believe that. And so we're just going to step out of the way, and we're going to say, Jesus, have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives. 
So if you would, as we pray, just go ahead and start to surrender to him. Father, we surrender right now, God, all our worries, all our anxieties, God, all the stress that's been weighing on us in our lives, the fear of the unknown, God, we're laying it all down right now because we know all of that just shows lack of faith and we know that you are in control, that you know what you're doing, that you are for us and you love us and you've saved us. And so, God, you're not going to leave us now. So, God, we're going to sing out as people that are surrendered to you. We're going to sing out as a free people knowing that you have set us free. We're going to sing out as a people that is alive and not dead. And so, God, I'm just asking that as we surrender and we step out of the way, you just have your way this morning. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in this church, in our community, in our country, God, in the world. Have your way. We trust you, God. And God, we trust you and we're expectant for you to do something today. We know when we meet with you, we should never leave the same as when we came in. And so, God, that's what I'm believing this morning is that we are not going to leave here the same people as we came in. But this is going to be a turning point, a moment in our lives. Whether we've been a Christian forever or we're not even a Christian yet, this is going to be the moment in our lives where we are going to learn to cling to you, Jesus. We're going to declare our love for you and then we're going to walk in that love for you. We thank you, God, that it's by your grace that we're saved, not on our own merit. It's by your power that we can walk through this life. So, God, let your spirit just fall on this place and empower us to live the way you've called us to. You are worthy of all the glory, God, and all the worship, and all of this is for you. We thank you, God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
shall come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found And dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Every 
heart will know the one who took our sin, the one who died and rose. So God, we pray to you, humble ourselves again. Lord, would you hear our cry? Lord, would you hear our lay? That every eye will see, that every heart will place this morning, God, there is no denying that. God, we thank you that where your people are, you are also, God, you are so faithful to show up in our brokenness, so faithful to show up despite the mess that we might have made for ourselves or the mess of this week, God. You are faithful to be there, faithful to speak the power and the authority of your word, God, through the worship. God, we thank you for worship, that we have breath in our lungs to sing and to praise to the one, the Holy One, the one who sent his son into the world to die for a broken, sinful people. God, we choose things above you every single day, and you died for us all the same. We thank you, Jesus. And God, as we remember the cross this morning, that's not something just reserved for Easter, but as we remember what you did on that cross, Lord, God, would that drive us to um, share the gospels with others, Lord? Our neighbor, that coworker that's hard to get along with, with every nation, every tribe. God, if we believe that you are Lord and we believe that you are Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, that you have control and sovereignty over everything that happens in our lives, that you are all loving and all good and all holy and that you sent your son to die, God, that message should change the way we live. God, to use our hands and feet. God, speed us up when we're slow to act and slow us down when we're acting outside of your will, Lord. We ask you to use the people in this church, not because Vision Church in itself is special, Lord, but because we come here prepared to meet you. So God, bless this time to equip the saints to do your work, Lord. That's why we're here. We're not here to socialize. We're not here to just sing because we like music. We are here to worship the perfect, holy one. And God, we are here to fulfill your will, to be filled up so that we can reach others, the lost, the broken, the hurting. God, open our eyes to see them, the ones that live right next to us and the ones that live miles and oceans and oceans away, Lord. Our hearts should break all the same for those that you love, those that you died for. So God is a continue this series about our core values, God, would we be reminded that everything that we do is unto your name. So as we talk about community today, God, community isn't just important because, again, we want to socialize or we want to make friends, but community is important because you have commanded it, because it is in your likeness. So, Lord, open our eyes to your word this morning. Speak through it in the way that only you do. Cast every other distraction 
every other idol today aside so that we can hear from you and your word. God, give us a hunger and a thirst for you in your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church. I want to welcome you. And anybody watching online, we want to welcome you as well. If you don't know, my name is Nathan. I'm the pastor here at Vision Church. And man, it is uh, it's good to be here. It feels good to be here. I believe this presence of God is here. Um, and man, you just y'all look good. And you look at home, you look good too. I don't know what you're wearing, but you look good. Um, but we want to welcome you. This is week three of our series, Pillars, which is about our core values as a church. Because we are celebrating five years, the whole month of October, which is amazing, five years of ministry here in DuCoin, and uh, we really want to get back to the roots of who we are. And, and before we get all into that, let me just say, I love you all so much. I really do. I, I'm so thankful for you all. You guys, like, no pastor has it as good as me. I'm just going to tell you. You guys are amazing. You're my family. You, you love and support Nikki and I, and I feel so undeserving of your guys' love and grace and, and generosity, uh, making pastor appreciation. You know, I forget even, even it's even a thing, and then you guys are just like so generous and loving and thoughtful, and I'm overwhelmed. I mean, we're making upgrades. Look at this. <laughs> Y'all know who made this. I don't even have to tell you. You know who made this. This is, look how beautiful this is. Uh, and I'm so thankful. This is something I've wanted since we started. And I'm like, oh, no, we'll just use a stool. This is fine. This is amazing. I'm just so thankful um, just for you all. Nikki and I both are. And I really don't have the right words to say. You know, I don't want it to sound like a speech or anything. I just want to say thank you. And I love you all. And I really believe there's no pastor out there that has that as good as me when it comes to a church family. And so thank you. Um, man, every year it just gets better. And I get to know more of you, get more families here, get to know your kids and everything. And it's just such a blessing, and so thank you. Um, we are in a series called Pillars, and uh, a pillar is a support structure. If you look up the definition of pillars, we looked at some in the bumper, vi bumper video. When you see the pillars standing, is there's these support structures for architecture to hold up the structure. Uh, another definition for pillar would be an upstanding part of something, and so you could be a pillar in the community, person that people know. That person helps make DuCoin, you know, continue and does a lot of good things for DuCoin. You could be a pillar in the community. A lot of you are pillars in your workplace. That you're, the people around you are like, you can't quit. <laughs> we need you here. You might be that person, and I, I pray that you are. And if not, work to be that person, you know, to glorify God in, in your workplace. Um, you, a lot of you, man, you are pillars in this church. We, have a, we are blessed with a lot of pillars in this church that hold this thing together, and I'm so thankful for all of you. And so you could be an upstanding part of something. The other definition, the third definition for a pillar is a fundamental precept. It's, a, it's, a, it's like something, a guideline for a, a group of people um, that have the same belief system. And so for us, we have core values that are the pillars of this church. When we planted five years ago, we wanted to set these core values that pointed us to Jesus, that held up the structure so we could see Jesus clearly, that rounded our, our faith and, and who we are as a people and how we gather and love each other. We wanted these pillars there so that we, we could be clear to see Jesus and what he is wanting to do. So we have core values. And the first week was everyone is accepted and everyone is expected. And so we covered that. Go back if you weren't here and watch that one. It's a really, really awesome 
awesome concept that you are accepted just as you are. How you come to Jesus, right? How does Jesus accept you? And he accepts you in your mess and your sin and your struggle just as you are. And you are welcome to walk through those doors. I promise you, the roof will not cave in. And if it does, it's not because of you, okay? And so if you have somebody that tells you, I can't go, the roof will cave in, the place will catch on fire. No, it won't. We'll be fine. We got fire extinguishers. We're ready to go. Just come. You're accepted. And then when you get here, we want to show Jesus to you in love. And we are expectant of our great God that he is going to work. So we are, everyone is expected to grow and to walk in holiness and to be sanctified in their faith as long as they're coming and seeking Jesus. That's what he does. He accepts you and then he grows you. It's grace and growth, which I just love that concept that that's grace and growth go together. And that's who we want to be as a church. Last week, we talked about that no one is ever done growing. And this is good news for us because whether you think you've arrived, guess what? You haven't. There's more to know. You haven't conquered. You haven't finished the movie. You haven't finished the book. You haven't beat the video game and it's over. There's more to know of Jesus. And that's good news. And if you're just starting out and you're struggling, you don't know much about the Bible. If I said turn to Romans, you're like, I'm kind of uncomfortable finding that. Guess what? It's okay because no one's ever done growing. And as long as God is God, he's going to work in your life. And so you get to seek him and trust him, and he is going to continue. He's faithful to grow his children if we're seeking him. And then this week, we're talking about without community, there is no church. That is going to be what we settle in today, and then next week we're going to finish the series with that. The gospel is the center of everything we do as a church. So if we're going to have a dinner, we're going to mix the gospel in there. We're going to say, invite a friend, let them feel the love of Jesus. If we're going to put on a block party, if we're going to give candy to kids, if we're going to do something fun, there's going to be a gospel focus in there that it's all about people knowing the good news of Jesus, who he is and what he has done and his love for them one thing interesting about a pillar or about pillars is that you will very rarely see one pillar standing alone. Have you ever noticed that you never really drive past a really ornate, nice architecture building, a, you know, a courthouse or an old church or something, and you see just one pillar? That'd look kind of weird, wouldn't it? You never see a lone pillar. You see several, usually four, sometimes five, sometimes even more than that, but there's usually more pillars because they need help to hold the structure together. One pillar, it takes a really, really strong pillar to try to hold the whole roof and the structure of architecture of a building together. So that's why usually architects will use four or five, depending on what complements, but to hold it all together. And there's less weight for each pillar to carry because there's more of them. Pillars carry the weight, and one by itself is just going to crumble. And I want you to hear this. If you're a pillar by yourself, you're trying to hold your life together by yourself without community, without God, I'm telling you, that's why your life is crumbling. Right now, if you're saying, I don't know why my life's falling apart, it's because you're the one pillar that's trying to hold everything together, and it does not work. And you know this. Deep down, you know that you trying to do it on your own does not work. One pillar by itself would crumble, but you add a couple more, and these pillars will stand forever, right? Like these well-built pillars, and you have multiple of them, and man, they'll just stand. Everything else is gone. Those pillars are still standing. We have these core values to point us to Jesus, but Jesus has given us each other to carry the weight of this calling. See, the church is not Nathan, right? Like, it's not me. Like, I can't do what I do without y'all. Like, right? Like, I don't get, like, there's Pastor Appreciation Month, and I thank you for that, but really that should be Church Appreciation Month because without you, I don't get to do what I'm doing, and I can't do anything that I'm doing. And so we need each other, and God has gifted us by his grace and his love and his blessings. We're so undeserving, and he says, I'm going to give you to each other. I'm going to give you friends, and guess what? The people you're sitting around right now, you probably wouldn't maybe even picked as your friends. You probably wouldn't have ever maybe even met at some points in your life. You probably wouldn't probably go out of your way to say, hey, let's hang out sometime. Let's read the Bible together. But God, in his infinite knowledge, has put these people here. The people in your life group, the people in, people in Vision Sisters, in Vision Men, everything that we do, the people around you, he has gifted you these people to hold you together that God has put such a huge calling. The calling of a church and the calling of a Christian is heavy 
And it is serious, and it is the biggest calling, because it's not just a life calling, it is an eternity calling. And for you to carry it by yourself, it's a heavy burden, and God says, you don't have to. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, and then on top of that, I'm going to bring other people that have the Holy Spirit into your life to help you with this calling, to carry this calling. We were created for community. I know a lot of people are like, I'm a loner. Like, I'm a lone wolf. I don't need nobody. Well, guess what? Yes, you do. Psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors, they've all even caught up to the Bible, what the Bible says, and they all agree that humans are called and drawn to community. Ever since, before, like, way back, right? Like, we're talking 1,000 years ago, people were gathering together. People were finding each other, and so we are drawn and we are created for community. It's the way God has called us. We're drawn to it. What's so cool about this is you were created in the image of God. That by itself should make us be like, I need to think about that for a minute. So you were created in the image of God. That's pretty awesome. You were created in the likeness of God. Well, here's what's really cool. In Genesis 126, says, God says, let us make man in our image. A couple things there. Let us Make man in our image. God, who are you talking about? He's talking about himself. Father, God, Father, or God, Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. So this is what's amazing. You're created in the likeness of God, and God in himself is community. The Trinity, and I'm telling you, someday we'll go through a series on that, and I, that, that's some deep stuff, but let me just get this straight with y'all. God in himself is one, and he is community with himself. And then you're created in the likeness of God. So what does that say? If God is community in himself, and he's created you in the image and the likeness of him, guess what? You were created for community. You were created for community. Listen, the point is that God is in community with himself. And if we're created in the likeness of God, we are called to community. We're called to be together and drawn to each other. And especially if you are Christians, you're going to sense the Holy Spirit in a brother or sister. You might not even get a chance to talk to them. And there's been moments, and I've had it in my life, where I've been around a person in college or some, working somewhere, and I'm like, they're a believer. I could just feel it. And then you get to know them, and you're like, they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I love, love Jesus. And I'm like, I knew it, man. I just could feel it, you know? And it's because the Holy Spirit, man, he, he's drawn to himself because he's community. Let's look in Hebrews. If you want to start turning to Hebrews, Hebrews 10, I'm read verse 23 through 25 here. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Somebody say amen. amen. He says in this, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your presence, that with you we are never alone, and you are everything and all that we need. If we have you, we have everything. But God, I thank you that you love us, and you're so gracious that you have given us each other, that you have put this church here for community to exist, that you, God, you've given us each other. And even though, just like a family, sometimes we annoy each other, Sometimes we might not always, we might rub each other the wrong way, God, that we should, right now in this moment, we should look around and be thankful and feel blessed that you have put these people in our lives. That every person that you've put in this church has a purpose in my life and I have a purpose in their life. So God, thank you for community. I thank you that you were community in yourself and that we were created in your image. Praise you, God, that you've done that for us. God, I pray for those that's listening right now that maybe they feel like a loner. They feel like they don't have community. They feel like they can't get plugged in. They feel like they don't have a purpose. God, I'm praying right now that you would speak through your words, speak through the power of the Holy Spirit to that person. Remind them who you created them to be. Remind them who you are. And surround them and remind them, open their eyes to the community that is around them, that you're putting people in their life for a purpose. God, I pray for some of us that maybe have gotten lazy in our, in, our, in our caring for each other. 
God, I want to repent of that. And I pray that you would help to open our eyes back that we are here to serve a purpose, to serve each other and love each other. And as people care for me, I care for people. And it's the way you've built us to love each other and care for each other, to stir one another up. So God, I pray that you'd bring conviction on every single person here this morning. God, I pray that you'd bring salvation for those that do not know you, God. Start to work right now, God. We believe believe that you're going to start working and drawing people right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The definition of community is a perceived connection between a group of people based on intent, identity, interest, and experience. And I think that's interesting because it's a perceived connection. Community is not tangible. I can't just hand you a box of community, right? It's something, it's a connection, it's perceived. And what I would say, this is the scientific definition, I would say in a Christian community, it's a Holy Spirit thing, right? Like this community, it's something that's perceived. It's something that we can't really grab onto, but God's put it there. It's between a group of people based on intent, identity, interest, and experience. And I love this because every single person here is different But we also have had the same experience if you know Jesus. You've came from death to life. I don't care if you were raised in church or if you were like the worst of the worst, you know, kind of Saul to Paul kind of transformation. Guess what? Your story's the same. You were dead and now you're alive. So we have this experience. Our intent is to bring glory to God. Our interest is Jesus and sharing Jesus. So even if we're completely different people, our identity is in Christ. And that's a really powerful thing. Jesus is what makes us a community. You know, see, I, I'm going to be a, a dad coming up. And so there's this funny thing that happens when you go to the doctor's office and you see other expecting dads over there sitting in the waiting room and you're just kind of like, like, it, there's this connection, you know, and there's like kind of this little bit of community there. Like, I don't even have to, it's like going shopping with, with your wife and you see another guy shopping with his wife and you're just like, hey man, like you're in community, you have this connection, but that's not what, like a dad's not what defines you, a husband isn't what defines you, a teacher's not what defines you, your work is not what defines you, your identity, if you're a believer in Jesus, is Christ, it is in Christ, and so that's what connects us, diversity is one of the most beautiful things in the church, because we, our identity is the same, but yet we are so gifted in different ways, we look different, we have different experiences, and when we come together, we can serve the body, right, because we're different, we talked about this in our Church Defined series, about being a fam- or being the body of Christ, that we're not supposed to, an arm is not supposed to be a foot, because we're supposed to be different, but our identity belongs to the same body, Jesus is what makes us a community. It's our identity in him, our experience with him. What's powerful about this is that I have more in common with a Christian on the other side of the planet that doesn't even speak English than I do with a white man born and raised in Ducoin who doesn't know Jesus. You get that? Somebody I've never met that does not speak my language that I probably will never meet. I have more in common with a believer across the planet than I do with Another guy about my age that's born and raised in Ducoin and, and that doesn't know Jesus because the Holy Spirit, our identity is in Christ and it connects us and gives us community. And Jesus will even use our differences and diversity to make us a stronger community. What matters is who we worship, right? That we come in here and we say, hey, you've had a t- completely different week than this person over here. You look completely different than this person over here. You have had different experiences in your life, but when we come in here, it's Jesus. Let's lift Jesus up. We're going to sing out together the truth of Jesus. We're going to read the Bible, the word of God about Jesus. And when we lift that up, we are this one body, this community that Jesus has put together. So Jesus makes his community. What does this look like? Because I'm talking about real community, not acquaintances, not fellow church attenders. We're talking about meaningful, loving, trusting relationships. We're talking about getting and entering each other's hurt. You know what I mean? Not just, hey, I see him at church on Sundays. We're talking about we are getting to know each other meaningful. We are carrying the burden. We are stirring each other up and loving each other for good works and encouraging one another. We are literally, and I know it's kind of cheesy, doing life together. Not just attending church together. We're doing life together. Real community. And Hebrews says, stir one another up in love. Stir each other up to good works. 
It says, do not neglect meeting together. Like, you should be waiting for the next opportunity. Like, I can't even wait till Sunday. I'm going to call my friend. I'm going to call Ethan up. We're going to get lunch because I just can't wait to gather with a brother or sister. I'm going to call somebody up because I'm not just going to wait for Sunday. Sunday's not just when community happens. Community happens throughout my life. It happens in hospital waiting rooms, right? It happens in, in, in living rooms on our knees praying together. That's where community happens. Stir one another up, and I love that because normally when I hear somebody say, when they were really stirring them up, I'm thinking they're like, like getting them worked up, you know, like, like you know, making fun of them or getting them really mad. No, scripturally, this word stir is like, I'm telling you, hype each other up. Encourage one another. Call each other out when you need to, but you know you love each other, and as much as you call each other out, you're saying, but you, man, God's going to use you, and you're going to do this. Let's get together. Let's pray. Let's believe that God is going to do this. We're stirring each other up. I want to be a church that's stirring each other up, right? Like believing God is going to do something. This is our first point. If you're taking notes, it took a minute to get there. I apologize, but this is good, good stuff. Community fosters growth. We've spent the first two weeks and now continuing in the third week of this series talking about growth. Everybody's expected to grow. No one has ever done growing. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to grow in your life, get in a community. Get to know other believers. Because community fosters growth. It creates this atmosphere where the Holy Spirit unites with the Holy Spirit and starts working in believers. And I see God working in you, and that encourages me. Should not make me jealous, right? I shouldn't look at seeing God doing stuff in your life and be comparing my life and say, man, I wish God wasn't doing that in their life. I wish he was doing that. No, we're a community. We're a body. And so we encourage each other. And this community fosters this atmosphere of growth. Growth towards Jesus, growth in our lives, that we want to be better people. Listen, you will not have growth by being a loner. I'm telling you, on your own, spiritually especially, this works in a lot of places in life, but spiritually, you will not see growth in your life alone. And I know you have faced hurt in church. I know you've had that friend that you thought you could trust that you couldn't trust, right? I know those things have happened, but I'm telling you, it is worth it. It is worth it to start to gain that trust again. I'm not saying go to life group and just bleh, air out all your dirty laundry. I'm saying get to know one another and build that trust. And when you have that trust, you can care for each other. And that's when growth starts to happen. Community stirs us up. Also, can I just say, community is fun. Praise God that he's given us fun, that we can sit around a bonfire together and laugh and talk about our lives, that God's like, he loves that. He's glorified by us having fun and laughing and having joy together. The community's fun. A lot of us, we look at it as a burden, like, oh, I don't want to really go to that, and I don't want to do that. God's gifted us that. That's kind of a slap in the face to God. He's like, I gave you this amazing gift, and we're like, oh, I'll stay home. Community fosters growth, stirs us up. Tony, have you ever had one of those conversations with a friend that just leaves you excited, leaves you energized? You know you have that one friend that you're just like, we're just going to laugh and we're going to be hyper when we get together. Like, we're just going to act silly and people's going to be like, who are you when you get, like, your, your husband or your wife's going to look at you and be like, who are you when you get around your friend? Like, you're a different person because you stir each other up and, and it's good for us to see growth. I'm telling you, every once in a while I get lunch with my brother Matt. We usually eat up at Kalen's and we'll sit up in the front window and we just dream, right? Like we're just like, you know, dream all these crazy things that then Matt's like, I'm going to do it. Uh, But we just dream and we talk about church and how the church is going to do this and God's going to use this church and how God wants to move and do coin in the city and bring business here and all this. And we talk about it and I'm telling you, I leave like I don't even drink coffee, but I leave as if I've drank like a whole gallon of coffee because I'm just like, and Nikki's like, what's going on with you? I'm like, because I got around community, and it stirred me up, and it motivates me. I get hyper. I'm motivated to get something done because I've been around the right people that encourage and stir me up. You need people to stir you up. You need people to challenge you. Like I'm telling you, that that's the part we don't like. You need people to challenge you. You need encouragement. You need people that's going to motivate you. You need people that's going to pray for you, even when you're like, I don't even really want that. They'll be like, well, too bad, I'm praying for you anyways. And you need people that's going to love you no matter what. That's why we started with everyone's accepted. You come in here, 
your mess, your baggage, your wounds, all of it. Bleed all over the car, but I don't even care. Just get in here so I can love you, right? Like, I just want you here. Because we believe Jesus is the one that restores and heals and then uses us. Godly community reminds us who God is. What he's done. What he's promised. And it leads to growth. It's just a powerful thing when we see communities fostering growth. You might not even be intentionally seeking growth, but you get in a good community and growth happens. So imagine what happens if you intentionally are seeking growth, intentionally seeking and studying God's word and praying, and then intentionally getting in a good community. Imagine that's like like on steroids, right? Like you're just, your growth is just going to blow up because you're being intentional in every way. James 5 Verse 16, which James is amazing, by the way, says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Because the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. There's a lot right in that. We're going to sit here for a minute, but confess your sins to one another. We don't like this. (laughs) We don't like this part because you know what you see of me is what I want you to see. You see, The mask, put the cape on, superhero, got it all together. Like, man, my family's great, everything's great. That's what you see. But there's got to be moments where we take the cape off, we take the costume and the mask off, and we just come before our community and our friends, and we're just like, listen, I'm a mess. I'm struggling. I have anger, and I don't know why. I'm just sad, and I don't know why. I'm tired, and I don't know why. And I need somebody to pray for, pray for me because I believe that the righteous person has great power in prayer as it is working. Not just when it's done, but while it's working, there's power in it. Second point, community provides accountability. Community provides accountability. Now, here's a couple things I want to get with this. This happens naturally, and sometimes that causes problems. Because if you get to know somebody on that deep of a level, you're really going to love that person. And so when you see them doing something that's going to hurt them, them, making bad decisions, dating the wrong person, doing whatever, you're, it's going to be really hard for you not to try to say something because you love them that much. So once again, accountability naturally comes out of community, deep, real community, but it's also something that we should seek to have permission with one one another with. Now, I'm telling you, just like a parent, when you love somebody, you're just going to tell them because you love them. But what would it look like if we were intentional with community and I met with my friends and my, my community that I could trust, that I'd earn trust with, and I could say, hey, I need you to hold me accountable. Will you please do that? I want to confess my sins to you, believing you're not going to spread it with anybody else. I need you to pray for me, and then I need you to hold me accountable of it. And then if the other person would say, hey, I'm struggling with this, will you hold me accountable of this? This is what happens when we're in community, and we don't like this part. We like the fun part. No, let's go back to just like eating together and laughing together. I like that part. No, real community and real growth happens with accountability. This goes right with growth. You need accountability. Like, this happens in real community. Trust, forgiveness, all has to be in a real community. Because there's going to be times where we fail each other, and we're just going to have to be forgiveness. There's going to be times that we have to trust each other, even when we're scared to. I'm telling you right now, I know that diets and exercising do not work for me when I try to do them by myself. I was going to the gym a lot when I had a partner I was going to the gym with, right? Because when I didn't feel like it, they were calling me up saying, we're going. And when they didn't feel like it, I was calling them up saying, I'm going to the gym and I'm picking you up, right? Like, we need that accountability. We need someone that's around us that's keeping us in check, in love, because they want what's best for us. We're sinners. We're broken sinners. We're humans. And so we're going to want to run towards worldly things. We're going to want to trust other things that aren't Jesus. And so we need that friend that grabs us and says, hey, 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 hey. You're leaning a little too much on world right now. And I love you so much. And you remember a year ago when you, you called me out? Well, I, it's my turn to do that now. I need you to see. Open your eyes. You're blinded right now. Let me show you in Scripture. Let me pray with you that you're seeking the wrong things. Why don't you come over and we can pray? You know what? I'll come to your house. I'm going to pray with you. We need community, and community provides accountability. 
Scripture always says that we need self-discipline. If you look through Scripture, self-discipline is a part of the Holy Spirit also, self-control. That's something that's produced in us as believers. And so we need self-discipline. We need self-control. But man, by God's grace, he's given us each other to hold each other accountable as well, to love each other, to, to, to nudge each other back in the right direction, to point each other to Jesus. I'm telling you, if you just had a church of one person, it's going to fall apart pretty quick because that person's just going to run whatever direction the wind blows. But you put a group of people together, and they help to hold each other together and keep each other on track, keep each other focused. When I'm stressed out and I feel like everything's falling apart because of COVID or because of something else going on, I have those people around me that says, hey, listen, Nathan, the church is not you growing it. The church is not you working in it. It is God. And so remind you, me what he's called us to. We need those people in our lives lives. Community is accountability, and God has given us to each other. We, we don't have to do this on our own, and that's what's beautiful. I don't have to figure this out on my own. I don't have to do it on my own. Can we confess our sins to one another? And it's not weakness. A lot of us think that showing those parts of ourselves to, to our friends, it's, we're going to come across weak. I'm telling you, it takes so much more strength to confess your sins to a brother than it does to hold on to it. Holding on to your sin and your struggle is cowardly, and it is weakness, and it is sin. Confessing it shows strength, it shows maturity, it shows humility, it shows growth in your life when we can go to somebody and say, listen, I'm trusting you that this is going to stay here, but even if not, I forgive you, but I need to share something with you. I'm struggling. And not only has God given us each other, he's gave us a helper, amen? So we have this the Holy Spirit, and this is, I know we, a lot of places don't talk about it. Holy Spirit is powerful. He is God, and he wants to work in your life. And I'm telling you all, so many of us, we're like, nah, we, we know we're saved, but we're just going to push the Holy Spirit back in the back, and we're going to do what we want to do. No, let the Holy Spirit lead your life. Let him in the driver's seat, because it is so powerful when the Holy Spirit's there. And this is what's amazing about community. Look at Matthew 18, verse 20. It says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. You want something really cool? We always pray before the service. There's a few of us that pray before the service. Tammy always leads us in prayer to get our hearts set in the right thing. She prayed this right before we started the service. Come on, Jesus, you're amazing. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. And so what is he saying? This is what it's saying. Point three, community attracts the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in you, but get, the, get, get this. When we gather together, the Holy Spirit's like, oh, yeah. Like, there's some Holy Spirit over there. I'm over there. Get me together where two or three are. I'm among them. Where we get people together, the believers together, community attracts the Holy Spirit. And we pray for revival, and we want God to move, and we want God to save people. I'm telling you. Then get in community. Community attracts the Holy Spirit. And where the Holy Spirit is, there's freedom, right? That's where God moves. When we gather together and rally around the name of Jesus and we pray, about, and, pray and pray for God to move and we sing praises, the Holy Spirit is moving. It's like having a fire and you push the embers of fire together, right? They're all hot on their own, but you start stirring those embers up and pushing them together and the heat, they thrive off of each other. And next thing you know, you got a flame again, right? So when we bring together us as a community and the Holy Spirit comes together, man, that's where the God is, that's where the Holy Spirit is, and that's where things happen. We fuel each other. So why do we stress coming to church or joining a life group or going to the women's and men's meetings? Because community attracts the Spirit, and we should want the Spirit. We should want more of God. Yes, Holy Spirit, lead my life. Run my life. And you know what? If I'm struggling to let him in the driver's seat, I need to get around some people and let the Holy Spirit be stirred up in me. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's salvation. We see this in the early church in Acts, right? The Holy Spirit falls. You remember in Acts? Look, go ahead and turn to Acts 2 if you if you got your Bibles with you. Acts 2, uh, verse 42 through 47, the Holy Spirit falls. And this is powerful. It says, And they devoted themselves 
That's what I love, that word, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. See, there's community happening. They devoted themselves to it. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Why? Holy Spirit fell, and they gathered together and devoted themselves to it. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. They're taking care of each other. And get this, they gather And the Holy Spirit's attracted, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they receive their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people, because the Holy Spirit's in it, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And the church said, amen. And how did this happen? Because the Holy Spirit's there, and then the people gathered and devoted themselves to community and loving each other, encouraging each other, serving each other. That brings us to our fourth point. Community creates ministry. See, God does the ministry and he does the work, but when a community gathers together, ministry, it comes out of that. You get a group of Christians together that are on fire for God and they don't immediately start talking about how to love people, there's a problem. Because if they actually love Jesus and they're on fire and they're praying together, it's going to go out from there. It's going to want to do ministry and care for one another. Like these, the early church was selling their possessions to take care of one another, to make sure the needs were met and the other people around them, their needs were met. They were devoted to community because community creates ministry because the Holy Spirit's in the midst. Community births ministry. It's what God created it to do. That's why he says, hey, You need community? I'm going to create you for community because I know when believers gather together that good things come out of that. They devoted themselves to each other. And it says, and the Lord added to their number daily. Notice the Lord is the one adding. It's not them adding the numbers. It says they devoted themselves to each other and the calling God had given them. They carried it together and the Lord did the work. The Lord added to their number day by day that were being saved. There's twofold things going on here. One, they cared for each other and others' needs. This is inner ministry that happens in the church. A lot of you have seen this in the church. Inner ministry. You're broken. You're struggling. You lose your job. Whatever's going on, there's inner ministry because we love each other and care for each other going on. And then two, it says God kept saving people. That's the outer ministry that then gets brought into the fold, right? And so that's the way community works. There's ministry happening when we gather together with each other, for each other, and for other people. This is the whole point of the church. Bring glory to God, right? Like we want to bring glory to God. That's why we exist, by caring for people. You want to bring glory to God in your life? Get in community and care for the people he's created. Caring for each other and making disciples, I'm telling you, that's what brings God glory. When God gets the opportunity, and he can save whoever he wants, but when we get to work and God uses and gets the opportunity to save someone, all the glory goes to God. Not to man, that church is awesome. Like, okay, we want to have great churches, and, and there's a lot of great churches in our surrounding area. No, the glory goes to God, and that's what He does. Community fosters growth, community provides accountability, community attracts the Holy Spirit, and community creates ministry. It flows out of it because God's people were called to do life together. We have planted this local church here, but we are united with the surrounding other churches, with the world Big C church that God has saved his people. We are united and we are a community. We care for each other. We love each other. Our hearts break when we hear of missionaries being killed overseas or wherever because those are our brothers and sisters. We have community. I'll close with this. In Genesis... And the the very first sin is committed, the fall, what we call it, what happened? It says sin enters the world and this causes a rift between us and God. So get the picture. Genesis before sin, God is walking with Adam and Eve in the garden. There's community between us and God. There's communion between us and God. Nothing hindering that relationship at all. Sin enters the world there's a rift between God and humanity. And not only that does it cause a rift between us and God, 
But what's the first thing we see happen after the sin happens? Is a rift between man and wife. He immediately starts blaming her. She's blaming him. They're going back and forth. So what happened, this beautiful, right, just a few verses back, God creates woman out of man. And he says, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. This is woman. And he's, Adam is blown away. And then they sin. And she's like, you, God, you gave me her. She messed it all up. Because immediately sin causes division in community. Sin causes division between us and God, separation. And so that's where I want to focus in on the gospel. This is the reason we preach Jesus every single week. This is the reason that we're going to cover next week, that the gospel is the center of everything we do. Because as humans, we were created for community. And then sin separates us from each other and from God. And we don't know what to do with ourselves. We're dead. We're struggling. Right? We're just falling all over ourselves and then we see Jesus and Jesus says you can't restore communion with you and God there's nothing you can try to build a tower a ladder you can try to be the perfect person you're never gonna fix that Jesus says but I can fix that I'm here right and I'm gonna go to the cross willingly and I'm gonna lay down my life and he's going to separate himself from me the father's gonna separate himself from me so he can unite himself with you So that rift in Genesis at the beginning that was caused between us and God, God says, I'm going to take care of it. Jesus is going to fix it. He's going to unite you back to me. We're going to be restored to God and restored to each other. And that is the gospel. That is the hope that we've been given in Jesus, that he reconciles community with God and with other people. And so let me just say this. Do not take community for granted. I know you've probably been hurt by it in the past. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. Do not take community for granted because Jesus died for it. Do not take your relationship with God for granted and think, okay, he's done it. I got my insurance. I'm good. I'll live my life. No, Jesus' blood, his life paid so you could have a relationship with God. We should cherish that. We should honor that. We should be so thankful and blessed that God would have this for us. And then when I see other believers, I want to stir them up because I want to remind them, remember what Jesus bought for us? Come on, you believe what Jesus can do? You believe what the Holy Spirit can do? Let's get together. Let's start loving this community. Let's start sharing the gospel with the lost people around here because we believe Jesus restores community with God and with each other. So I'm going to pray for us. Man, I believe the Spirit's moving right now. If you're at home, I pray that you can feel the Holy Spirit there as well. If you do not know Jesus, I want you to know this is truth. This is the Word of God, and this is really how it is, that you are separated from God. And if you would just put your faith in Jesus, He restores communion with God and then restores our relationships with each other. It's only by his power that that can happen. You want to know why all your relationships are messed up? It's because this isn't right. Get this right, and this starts to be restored. And so I'm praying that you would place your faith in Jesus. If you're here, I'm praying that you'd place your faith in Jesus here right now today. And maybe you're a brother or sister, you're Christian like me, and you're saying, hey, listen, I've taken community for granted. I've been lazy with community. I've been lazy with caring for my brothers and sisters, but I'm not going to do it anymore. Let's make that a promise to God today. Let's lay that sin down, confess it, and say, yes, God, I'm not going to take it for granted. I'm going to serve your church. I'm going to serve my brothers and sisters. I'm going to have meaningful community. I'm going to give permission for them to speak into my life and keep me accountable because I want to live like Jesus. I want to have a, I want to walk in holiness, and so I need each other. We need each other to do that. So if you have questions following the service, just come sit up here in one of the front rows. I'll be with you. Somebody will be with you. We'll pray with you, answer your questions, whatever you need. If you're watching online, fill out that online connect card. We want to be in touch with you to care for you and minister to you as well. But let's pray and just ask God to work and move in this place. Father, we thank you, God, that you are good. We thank you that you uh, love us so much that you have given us each other, that, God, when there was a rift between us, there was no way to fix it between us and God, uh, between you, God, and between each other, that you sent Jesus to die in our place to fix that rift, to bridge the gap between us. And, God, you loved us so much that you would go to the full extent to restore us to you. And some of us are so lazy that we won't even take one little step towards you. So God, I pray that you bring conviction over us right now, that we would trust you, that we would seek you, that we would run to you, not just take a step 
towards you, but we would run to you, we would cling to you because you were good and you blessed us with community. Not only with each other, but with the Holy Spirit, with you, God, we get to know you. We get to walk in your authority and your power. God, I thank you right now that you are drawing people. God, I pray that you're pouring forgiveness over people right now, helping mend their broken hearts, making us aware of things in our life that have kept us from you. God, help us to lay those down right now. And God, I pray for the lost right now, those that feel like their life's a mess. I pray that this, they would hear this word right now and that your, your word would penetrate their hearts, God. That your, their eyes, you would open their eyes to see you for the first time and they would place their faith in you. Have your way, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. that God, we come into this place and you move and you speak anyways, despite it all, despite if we've been a mess or if we've been faithful, as faithful as we can be this week, Lord. God, you are speaking and you are moving in your people. God, we thank you that you are not a silent God, but God, that you are near to us. So in turn, Lord, give us a desire to draw near to you. God, that happens a lot through community. 
worshiping God. And while it is important to have one-on-one -on -one intimate time in the Word and in worship with you, God, there is something special, something powerful about being in a room filled with your people, all saved by your blood and your grace, God, that we are connected by something that is so much bigger, so much stronger, so much holier than ourselves, Lord, God, that we would desire to be a part of a community of your people because you're moving there. God, we need each other. To get your work done, we need each other. God, we cannot save people in ourselves. We cannot save Ducoin, just one person. God, first and foremost, we need you and your grace and your mercy and your will to be done in this town. But God, we need each other. God, you want to use us, so God, we need to be with each other in order to be used in that way, Lord. God, we thank you for the community that you have created and you are nurturing and creating in this church, Lord. God, we thank you that even with COVID and with restrictions and so many things happening, God, that you have developed um, relationships in this place, Lord. And God, I pray that you continue to do that. If there's someone here that hasn't quite made that connection yet, God, would you make it clear to them, a person in this room today, that, uh, that they need each other that they need someone to pray for them, to keep them accountable, to stir them up, to encourage them, God, that they would seek community in this place with these people. God, we pray for the surrounding churches. Um, God, that you would bless them in their communities. And God, that all of us could work together. There's so much division, so much happening. But God, your church, your people called by your name, we just want to do your work. So we'll work with whoever. We'll create community wherever. If it's where you are, where your spirit is, God, we don't want to move unless you move. So God, have your will and your way in this place. We thank you for your word, for the gospel, for the way that it has changed the people in this room. We can feel it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Damn, church, we thank you for gathering with us this morning, whether you're here in person or you're watching online. It is our honor and privilege to worship with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and worship this God that we're talking about. If this is your first time watching, your first time coming here, and you maybe have questions about what we believe, about how you can find that community, fill out a digital connect card. So you can find a link for that on our website anytime, or there's a link in the bio of the live stream right now going where you can find that. And if you call Vision Church your home and you wanna worship um, through giving, you can do that through the Church Center app, text to give, you can do that through the link in the bio. There's so many ways that you can plug in to what's happening here in the ministries that we were giving to at this church. And as you know, we're celebrating our five year anniversary this month. So if you're here in person, that's the perk of being here in person. We do have a gift for you as you leave the lobby. And so me and a couple other people try to run out there to hand those to you. We just wanna thank you for being a part of the ministry that is happening here. Again, it's because of you guys, it's not because of us, it's God and his people doing his work um, and praying for his will in this community. Um, so again, thank you and we'll see you again next week, church.